Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. I just wanted to start off my talk with a little reflection on my past career. I've had the good fortune uh, through my career to stumble on a few discoveries that are of mild interest in the world of basic science. And I suppose some of those uh, discoveries have had relevance or indirect relevance uh, to the real world, as it were. Uh, but I've yet uh, in my scientific career to uh, achieve anything which has had you know, direct and immediate relevance to um, the real world. And the project that I'm going to um, describe to you this afternoon is one where I think there is the potential to do that. So I hope that it will be um, uh, one of the high points of my scientific career. I'm also uh, pleased to have the chance to talk to you this afternoon because this is a project. It involves Africa, it involves Kenya in particular, and I've not yet had the opportunity to connect with the um, uh, uh, Cambridge Africa um, uh, partnership as a whole. So uh, this opportunity is an opportunity for me to describe to you this project and hopefully to establish some links uh, that will help us um, progress uh, the work that we're doing. So it's a project uh, related to uh, maize in Kenya, which as implied uh, in this slide here is a massively important crop in that part of the world. Unfortunately, all is not well with maize cultivation in East Africa at present. This is a plant here um, that is affected with a disease uh, this is the early stages of the disease in this slide. The disease is called maize lethal necrosis. And maize lethal necrosis uh, does what it says. Um, it uh, kills uh, the infected plants. It's a disease which is spreading through East Africa and causing uh, massive losses. I think these, uh, quite often when you talk about plant disease, people put uh, values on uh, the plant, the, the disease in terms of the millions of uh, dollars lost, but of course uh, the impact on the affected people uh, goes beyond these mere millions of dollars. It's people's um, lives and livelihoods that are um, affected. So the disease emerged in the late uh, 2000s, and as you can see from these figures here, so $20 million lost in 2012, $70 million estimated in 2013. It's a disease which is spreading. It's spreading throughout Kenya. Uh, it's now been uh, detected uh, in the adjacent countries. And there's a pressing need uh, to really uh, develop a uh, solution to uh, the disease. It's, I'm not quite sure why... Um, my student Luke gave me these slides, and I'm not quite sure why we've got a picture of Barack Obama there, maybe. Uh, but, well, he's got Kenyan connections, I guess. But, um, um, so here we've got a picture of plant viruses, and this is just um, a press article um, illustrating how the impact of this disease in Kenya is uh, sufficiently important uh, that it has attracted uh, ministerial attention. Uh, within Kenya. It is a major um, uh, uh, disease. So how many plant diseases have come to the attention of the British ministers of agriculture? Well, ash dieback would be one, but that's probably one of very few. Um, uh, so the fact that this is a disease that has come to ministerial attention and is having political um, uh, ramifications in Kenya is an indicator um, of the impact of this disease. So some research has been done on this disease. Um, the thinking at present is that it is a disease caused by two viruses. So you don't get the disease when the plants are infected, it's thought, uh, by either virus alone. It's when the plant is infected with two viruses together um, that you have um, the disease. I'm not going to go through all of the technicalities of what these um, viruses are. Um, uh, it's on the slide for those of you who, for whom this uh, means something. Just to point out um, that one class of viruses associated with this disease is endemic and has been endemic for a long time in East Africa, causes mild disease by itself um, uh, and not the severe disease that the 
um, uh, that the maize lethal necrosis is associated with. Um, the second virus uh, has probably uh, come to um, Africa from Asia and it may well have come associated with the uh, cut flower industry. So it's the movement of um, plant materials which was likely led to the establishment of um, this disease. So this is the uh, second virus um, described initially in the United States um, before 1990, um, spread into uh, China and more recently and, and also parts of Southeast Asia and more recently into Eastern and Central Africa um, in the maize crop. The uh, disease is spread in a number of different ways. It's most likely spread by thrips, insects that infest the plants. It may well be uh, transmitted along with seed stocks, although this is a controversial um, uh, topic. And it may also be transmitted through water. So uh, this disease here, MC, maize chlorotic model virus, is a very robust virus particle and it can be tr transmitted through uh, water supplies. Um, so um, the spread of this disease is, is highly problematic. I have to say that some of the basic work has not yet been done on this disease. So um, th this is all uh, inference based on association with the disease and the presence of these two viruses. But in plant pathology or in pathology generally, um, an experiment that uh, all students will learn about is satisfying Cox postulates, is showing that you can recapitulate the disease by um, inoculating a non-infected plant uh, with the supposed disease agents and that has not yet been done as far as I'm aware with um, maize um, uh, lethal necrosis. So the solutions to uh, maize lethal necrosis are several fold. So um, one of the CGIR Institute CIMIT uh, in Mexico is um, uh, initiating uh, resistance uh, breeding trials um, and um, these are progressing, although it's proving difficult to identify highly resistant germplasm to introduce into the breeding trials, and uh, even uh, with the acceleration that molecular biology can provide in the breeding programs, uh, realistically, we're talking 10 years uh, before a finished variety uh, will uh, come out of all of this. Um, there are farm management trials in uh, Kenyan um, research uh, institutes and those are important um, and I hope that we can uh, uh, assist with those uh, by helping to uh, characterize the disease agents and to be able to look at the um, uh, variation within the viruses uh, in the different field sites. And this is something that uh, me and my student Luke Braidwood um, are involved in. So you can't really devise a management strategy until you know what you're um, dealing with. The third potential solution, and this is the major part of Luke's project, is, is biotechnology. Um, so we've joined forces uh, with uh, 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 Kenyan research institutes, um, Calro and Becker, and we've also been involved um, with the uh, Food and Environment Research Agency here in the UK uh, in uh, doing, this, doing this work, and I'll describe what it is in a moment. And as I say, uh, Luke Braidwood is a BBSRC-funded student um, who is the main driver of the project at present. So how are we going to harness uh, biotechnology um, to develop a solution to this disease? Well, we're going to exploit the fact um, that plants have in them an immune system uh, that protects them against uh, diseases. So you all know about the immune system in animals where um, uh, you develop antibodies um, that will target whatever causes the disease. Um, and that involves uh, shuffling around genes within the animal and it's a rather complicated process. The plant viral immune system is actually brilliant. Uh, because what it does, it takes a part of the invading virus and it uses that as the specificity determinant um, of, the, um, of the immune system. So this is what happens uh, when a plant normally gets infected with a virus. The plant gets infected with the virus, uh, the plant then sees the virus and it activates this immune system 
and eventually the virus stops accumulating in the infected plant. It's because the, own, the plant's own immune system is coming into play. What we can do with biotechnology is to take a fragment of the viruses that cause a disease. We can introduce those fragments into a plant using GM technology uh, so that we can prime this immune system. What you will then have is a plant uh, with, as I say, a primed immune system that will be constitutively resistant uh, against the um, disease um, that you're um, interested in. And uh, this is something that my work has been, my lab has been working on now for uh, 25 years. And I've said it several times in public and I'll say it again, there's no reason why any major crop in the world should be susceptible to virus diseases because we can use this approach um, in a GM strategy uh, to make all of these plants um, resistant against the uh, disease. And one of the nice things about this approach is that um, you can do it in um, any variety. So what we're planning to do in our African project is to take the farmer preferred locally adapted varieties of maize and add using our GM approach the virus resistance um, gene into those adapted viruses of maize. Um, so what you'll have is the farmer preferred varieties but with added resistance. So whereas in a conventional breeding program um, you um, you jumble up all of the genes and you lose many of the traits um, that a farmer uh, would have preferred. So you have to um, do lots of um, breeding to get them back. So where are we um, with this uh, project at present? So Luke has just been out in Kenya. Uh, he's been um, with the, um, the carry scientists sampling in the field uh, so that we can characterize the viruses involved in this disease, find out how uh, variable they are from site to site, um, and also find out whether or not there are any um, other viruses that are associated with this disease. And so we're using um, modern high throughput um, uh, sequencing technology to be able to do that. Uh, I think that we'll be uh, finished with that phase of the work by the end of the year. Having got that information, what we'll then be able to do is to design the genes that we will uh, put into the, um, uh, into the maize plants. And um, that will be a relatively trivial exercise and for a skilled uh, uh, a bench scientist like Luke uh, to assemble the genes uh, will be a work of days or certainly a few weeks rather than a long period. So I would hope that by early next year um, we'll be in a position together with our Kenyan partners um, to uh, transform maize um, uh, in order to um, engineer the resistance into those plants and then subsequently we'll be able to um, test uh, the plants uh, for um, resistance and again we'll do that together with, um, uh, with our uh, Kenyan partners. Uh, so this just shows you part of what Luke was involved in uh, traveling through Kenya uh, to uh, pick up samples. He's also uh, got sequence data from Rwanda and uh, we have samples from several other adjacent countries as well so I'm optimistic that we'll be able to get a comprehensive picture of what this disease is like um, in the field. And then one question you might ask is, well, how confident are you that this will work? Well, I mean, I know one should never say always, um, uh, but uh, this is a strategy um, that is well proven. As I say, my lab has been working on related approaches uh, for more than 20 years now. Um, and other groups have used essentially similar approaches uh, to engineer uh, disease resistance against other pathogens, other viruses, into a range of different plants. And this is just one of hundreds of slides that one could have taken from the literature um, illustrating um, that um, it does work. So I'm not quite sure of the legend of this, but you've got infected susceptible plants here, and then you've got uh, resistant infected plants um, elsewhere on the slide. It's a strategy, as I say, that is well proven and I think we can be um, highly confident that it will um, work. Now I'm well aware that, so I just talked to some extent about the science and technology part of this whole project and there's going to be uh, a lot more to it than that. It's a GM project uh, and so 
um, there will be an element of um, uh, public engagement in um, uh, describing the project to farmers and um, other people in Kenya. They'll be um, part of the regulatory process that will need to be gone through uh, before the uh, plants can be um, released into the field. And there'll be other elements to consider as well about, you know, what's the vehicle for uh, making the new varieties available. I know that there was discussion earlier on today about commercial restrictions and so forth um, on GM crops. And what I can say in this project is that um, this is a project that is funded um, at present by the BBSRC. It's public money. Um, there's no industrial involvement in uh, this project and I certainly uh, would intend uh, that the output of this project will be, if you like, as near to open source as one can uh, make it. And so I hope that that will be um, uh, uh, an attractive uh, feature of this project. But uh, as I say, I'm, I'm aware that what we're doing here is addressing part of a problem in agriculture at present in Eastern and Central Africa, and it'll need to be um, uh, uh, integrated into the whole agricultural ecosystem and socio-economic systems, if you like. Uh, and I hope that through contacts with uh, Cambridge Africa program, uh, we'll be able to um, achieve that. So thank you very much for your attention and I'll be happy to take questions. <laughs>